Tagging complex documents can be a huge hassle, especially for our mobile users. Today on Developer Deep Dive, we'll be talking about some of the machine learning algorithms behind our auto-tagging technology. Hi, my name is Matthew Rocknich, a developer advocate at DocuSign. Joining me today is Rafael Alabi, PhD and senior machine learning engineer. Raf, it is great to have you on the program. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. I really appreciate it. So before we begin, I want to ensure that all of our viewers understand some key uh, DocuSign terminology and the most basic e-signature object model. So the DocuSign object model consists of four kinds of objects, envelopes, documents, recipients, and tabs. Tabs and fields are locations in a document where a recipient must provide input. This could be a signature, text, initial, or any number of other types. So Raf, where does this flow go awry? Uh, thank you. Um, I think what we noticed was that our mobile application users were having a hard time processing fields on their documents. The pain point got exponentially more frustrating when there were many fields to be positioned. Um, for example, uh, if you take a look at um, the documents to your right, uh, what you find that is that that document is very, very easy for anybody to tag without an e any issue. However, as you go to um, towards the um, as it goes towards your right, sorry, to, that was the left. So as it goes towards the right, you find out that the documents get progressively more uh, difficult to tag and probably even probably impossible for a human to tag. Well, that's where we decided to collaborate with Google and we came up with um, this architecture, uh, which is the auto-tagging architecture or algorithm, uh, which can tag documents irrespective of their complexity um, in around two seconds. Uh, to enable this technology, what we had to do was marry two areas of machine learning, computer vision and natural language processing. Now, computer vision is a branch of machine learning that tends to solve category of problems like classification, classification and localization, object detection, etc. Natural language processing on the other end tries to solve an array of problems where semantic and syntactic recognition of language phenomenon are vital. Uh, problems that are solved by natural language processing today include machine translation, information retrieval, sentiment analysis, etc. By marrying these two technologies together, we were able to successfully deliver an auto-tagging technology that today caters to and provides a better um, experience for DocuSign uh, customers. Now, uh, the computer vision problem that we solved, um, basically you can think of that as something that is easy to solve and we solved that using um, basically third-party algorithms that are available in the market. However, the natural language proce procedure itself is what we found to be much more interesting. Um, now, the architecture that we eventually came up with is shown here, whereby you basically have a PDF document that is being, um, that you get from either from an edge device, from a mobile device, or from the web. The PDF document gets converted to images, and then these images get fed into an OCR, which is an optical character recognition tool. And the OCR, its function is basically to extract the tokens. Then after the tokens have been extracted, this is passed through a recurrent neural network and eventually we're able to tag, accurately tag labels on every page from the PDF document. To go into more details, so we take our PDF document and the PDF documents, they are converted into images and the images, um, um, they can be of different um, dots per inch or DPI. And as we go higher in DPI, we actually get much more larger files and it also becomes um, a problem transmitting this across the network. So that's why we eventually settled with 76 DPI. There were some bugs in accuracy, but eventually we did get accuracy of up to 95%, which is really good uh, for, the, um, um, for the performance and for the um, problem statement that we had at hand. Oh, so after we've taken our PDF documents and converted them to images, the next step is now to pass it through an optical character recognition tool. Now, the OCR that we use, because we work in collaboration with Google, we use the PyTesseract, which is a, a publicly available um, OCR engine that was developed by Google or that's been maintained by Google. And eventually what that does is that within a, um, 200 to 500 milliseconds, you can actually get the tokens on the, the tokens, which are the words on the document, as well as their respective locations. And this is what we actually feed into the next tax, which is on the next page. So when we get the tokens or the words and their locations, our next goal is eventually to be able to use those words, their locations within the document to eventually characterize a bounded box. 
and we use multiple approaches. One of the approaches being basically just to um, select an arbitrary um, static bounding box. When we did that, what we had, what we found out was that because there's no rule in any language, and much less so in the English language, as to where a particular token or word that characterizes a bounding box should be, you can find situations whereby you don't actually get to select the word that is correct or that correctly identifies or characterizes that uh, bounding box that you want to tag. Uh, so because of that, we dealt, we shelved this, and then we went to another approach, which is um, instead of us actually using a physical bounding box, what we said to use was just um, to have a, um, a varying bounding box. Basically, what we're trying to do is to just um, to look for locations outside of your bounding box until you actually either find a word or you find another bounding box. And when you do that, you extract the word and you take the word as a as group of words that eventually should characterize that bounding box. And when that is, after this is now done, we need to be able to eventually place a location to the bounding boxes. Just to clarify, what you're trying to accomplish here is determine which token applies most accurately to the bounding box. Is that correct? Exactly correct. Yes. Right. So how, how do we accomplish that? How do we figure out which one is most applicable? Uh, very good question. So eventually what we settled with was we used the, um, basically the rule of the English language or maybe the accepted rule of English language whereby if you're trying to, normally English is written from left to right, right? So because right. of that, um, if you're trying to actually characterize a bounding box, more than likely you're going to characterize the bounding box using the left um, token, the token to the left of the bounding box. However, we've seen situations where it occurs at the right, but more than more than likely, it's going to be from the left. But then you can also have situations whereby there's no space on the left, and then the user eventually has the characteristic or the attribute to the bounding box occurring either at the top or at the bottom of the bounding box. And this happens more importantly for cases like signature, as you probably see that signatures, the signature is probably going to be at the bottom of the bounding box, and then you now see that. So eventually, what we decided to do was just take the location of the bounding box into perspective and apply weightage to those locations before we take those words and then parse those words into um, a recurrent neural network. When I said we take those words and parse them into a recurrent neural network, I lied a bit because um, words are not what you parse into a recurrent neural network. You actually need to parse vectors. They take floating point numbers. And so what I'm showing here is basically a way whereby we converted those words into vectors. So just showing here is just a mapping. Just as let's this is just as an example here. Let's assume we're trying to map the words like skin, queen, man, woman, smart, etc., into um, a hundred or a three hundred dimensional vector space, whereby each vector, each specific vector actually has a representation. Um, here, what we have here is royalty, gender, and then we also have intelligence. So for like the king, the king, we expect that a queen, king is, um, is, is, is a royal person. If you hear the word king, it's probably 100% that person's royal. And then gender is probably that maybe it's a male or a female, and most likely it's a male. And then intelligence is we expect some level of intelligence from a leader, right? So those are the word vectors here uh, that characterize a king. And then a queen will be probably something of something similar, but uh, of a negative gender because a queen always characterizes a female um, gender. Um, so you have the same kind of attributes and you have here intelligent to intelligence will be 0.9 for the intelligent vector space, but will probably be um, neutral zero and zero for either gender or for um, um, royalty because I mean, maybe uh, intelligent. Where are we deriving uh, these correlations? Yeah, most of these vectors are we derive them from um, Google already has all of this um, done. And what we do is just um, use this word vectors. So we can either have, we, we, we actually explore three. Uh, we can have fast text, which is from Facebook, which is a um, what to vec model from Facebook, or you can have the what to vec itself, which is from Google, or you can have glove vectors, which is from Stanford. So we explored using all three, and eventually we set up with using um, glove vectors um, for um, converting our words into vectors. Got it. 
And after the words have been converted into vectors, then the next step is parsing these vectorized words or the vectorized representation of these words into an RNN. Uh, so when we parse it through an RNN, the function of the RNN, you can think of it as taking each word or each 300 dimensional thought vector and then doing something similar to a singular value decomposition on those word vectors, making them much smaller um, and then parsing you can think of the succinct meaning of those words along and eventually mapping those out into a probability distribution space whereby we're able to eventually find out, okay, well, because we've seen all of these words um, that surround a specific token, guess what? This means that this word here is probably a signature or this um, bounding box here is probably a signature or a date or a date sign or an address, et cetera, which is what is being shown here effectively. So you have um, the words going and eventually come out to give you a probability distribution space, which you can basically, you can think of it as, well, guess what? The highest probability is right here. And so because of that, that's what um, the output is most likely to be the attributes to the bounding box. Um, and so um, this is most of it. This is actually all of the architecture that we have. Um, and um, so I, I hope I've been able to uh, pass across to you um, the uh, very interesting technology that we work with um, in collaboration with Google, whereby we're able to take PDF documents, map them, convert them to images, pass them through an OCR, and eventually pass them through an RNN to get um, very accurate tags on um, bounding boxes um, that is used for uh, for documents and has been used to eventually make life easier for uh, mobile and as well as web users of the DocuSign ecosystem. It's fantastic. I, I can definitely speak for our, our dev community and say that I didn't realize how complex auto tagging uh, would be. And so it's, it's, it's incredible to see how exactly it works. Uh, do you have a demonstration that you could show us of auto tagging manifested in one of our products? Oh yeah, definitely. So shown here, a document is being uploaded and you can see um, that's a team talent form PDF document. And you just need to provide a name. Here we have a random name that's just been provided, an email address. Um, and once that is done, you basically upload that to the DocuSign environment. And then you get the option to either um, accept auto tagging, uh, accept auto tagging feature. And if you click yes on that, what happens is that you get your PDF document converted to a PNG file and then sent to our auto tagging um, algorithm. Um, and then eventually what you get back is um, a well tagged doc document. And you can see this is really fast. This is probably run for probably That's close so cool. to like less than a second. Wow. Um, <laughs> having spoken to a ton of developers at conferences and hackathons, I can say confidently that this is going to change the game. Um, you know, tagging documents, especially very, very complicated forms, is not always fun. And so uh, I'm very excited to see this used uh, on, a, on a wider scale by our customers. So for the developers out there, if you're interested to explore DocuSense developer offerings, uh, please head over to the DocuSense Developer Center, where we have guides, API reference, and tools to help you get started with your integration. And uh, Raf, it was absolutely a pleasure to have you on the program. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure being here. If you liked that video, be sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest DocuSign developer content. If you want to see a specific topic in a future video, comment below. For everything else, visit the DocuSign Developer Center.